mm -hmm. uh, what companies are, um, you know, are supposed to be growth companies. Uh, so there's a lot to read from. And investing in stock markets, I think, don't do it as a hobby mm -hmm. and don't do it uh, as though it was some sort of a game. It is, uh, you could, it's very risky and I think you should take a lot of advice before you open a, uh, a brokerage account. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there is uh, money to be made and money to be lost. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, I wouldn't say uh, it's a roller coaster at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, medium to long term, you always have a good growth factor. It's like if you take the last 20 years and if you look at the chart patterns, mm -hmm. there's always been a handsome return long term. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking to speculate on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. I said, uh, suggest if you are not a professional, please don't do it. Right. Very good. Um, now, we're going to touch on the, obviously the Islamic stock exchange and stuff, mm -hmm. but just wanted to ask you, I mean, we've had some callers as well um, asking, why do they need an Islamic stock exchange when you have something called like the Halal Dow Jones and, and all these indices? Sharia and, and, and also the brokers. Do they, can the brokers advise you which share is Sharia compliant? Or? Okay. Um, the, the whole thought process behind mm. the Islamic exchange or the Sharia Umex, which we call it, which is mm. the Sharia Uma, means Sharia Community Exchange. Right. Uh, the whole idea behind that is for the following reasons. We have almost $1.1 trillion sitting in Islamic banks, mm. and most Islamic banks need to invest that money somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so we have something called Sharia compliant mm -hmm. securities, which they invest in. And today we have something like 15,000 Sharia equities or mm -hmm. compliant equities in the universe, which most Islamic banks and Islamic funds mm -hmm. invest in. There's 1.1 trillion sitting in cash, liquid assets. There's 90 billion in funds and I'm sure Dr. Dar will confirm this, uh, there are 670 funds, mm. Islamic funds, run by mainstream fund managers, and all of them go to invest in Sharia-compliant securities. Sharia-compliant means that you don't trade in anything mm. that is prohibitive, mm. or your balance sheet is Sharia-compliant. So, where is all this money being invested today? in 15,000 mainstream companies, nothing to do with Islamic enterprise. Mm. We have Islamic enterprise, which is in the backyard of all Islamic finance, mm -hmm. but not being invested in, purely because they are not liquid assets. Okay. So Islamic enterprise, for example, you take the, the pizza chain here in the UK doing six, very, very well, mm. which is a halal pizza chain. Mm -hmm. They need expansion money. Mm -hmm. They can't tap any money from the banks. Mm -hmm. So we're suggesting that there is enough Islamic enterprise in the world that needs a platform where people can invest in those Islamic enterprises. Mm -hmm. So why not have an Islamic exchange promoting Islamic enterprises? Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about Islamic enterprises. You have 1.6 billion Muslims, mm -hmm. larger than the population of China, larger than the population of India. And you have these two markets are considered the most dynamic markets in the world because they're population driven. In fact, Halal and Islam has the largest population mm -hmm. of any community and we have almost 50% of the Islamic population below the age of 35. Mm -hmm. Now that is a dynamic society. I take 1.6 billion people, I take myself, which I'm not a Muslim, I'm, I'm a, you know, a non-Muslim, and like me, I eat indirectly a lot of halal food. Like mm -hmm. me, there are another billion people who are eating halal food. So mm -hmm. you take 2.6 billion people mm -hmm. on the planet and you spend a dollar a day and you multiply that by 365 days, and that runs into trillions, 
which is a dynamic market where the entire mainstream, including our own brothers mm. who run pots of Islamic finance, are not investing in Islamic enterprise. Mm -hmm. And I have seen this whole, and being a non-Muslim, I said something is wrong here. Why don't we initiate an exchange where we bring Islamic enterprises, successful enterprises, mm -hmm. to the marketplace where we can get mainstream people to invest and non-mainstream people like uh, Islamic uh, funds to invest in their own backyard. That is the whole reason to create the Islamic exchange because it's very easy for Islamic uh, banks to say, oh, those are illiquid assets. Mm -hmm. So we're creating a platform for liquid assets. Okay, excellent. And on that note, we actually have a caller on the line, so we're sure. just going to take a question from the caller. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Can I get your name where you're calling from? Yeah, my name is Monsho. Okay. And I'm calling from East London. Okay, welcome on the show. Now, what's, what's the question you have for our guests? Yeah, brother, I mean, I, I'm into um, the stock market myself. I mm. just wanted to know, um, I didn't catch on what you guys were talking about, the uh, um, shares and that, but you know, like Lloyd, mm. um, would that, I mean, is that, it's like Lloyd's the, the bank. All right, to buy shares in. The, the bank, the bank, Lloyd's bank. Yes. Okay. Can I buy shares in that? Or no? Right. Okay, I'll, I'll put that question forward to our guests. So, Mahesh, what would you think? Uh, do you, do you, would you like to answer that question or Dr. Dahl? I'm not a stock advisor. Okay. Uh, and I think, I don't know whether that question was directed, whether it's Sharia compliant. Yeah. Or should we be advising him to buy the stock? I don't think anybody on this panel mm. uh, are stock advisors. But from a Sharia compliant point of view, uh, I think Dr. Dahl should answer mm -hmm. that question. Yeah. Basically, this question is about investing in financial services companies. I wouldn't refer to Lloyd's. No, this can be any bank. Uh, the Sharia rule is that no, you cannot invest in financial services companies which are interest-based, whether this is Lloyd's, Barclays, or any other financial institution which is interest-based as a matter of principle because these companies are interest based so from sharia viewpoint it is not permissible for sharia sensitive investors to invest in such companies however there are certain islamic banks and if those banks are listed on a stock exchange then it is permissible for sharia sensitive investors to invest in those stocks i think the the answer is very clear so, Jazakallah for the caller. We have another caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Wa alaikum as uh, Can I get your name and where you're calling from? My name is Chaudhry and I'm calling from London. Okay, welcome on the show. What's your question for our guests? My question is that uh, some of these uh, brokers, uh, they uh, to get, get you. Uh, hello? Yes? I, I think I'll cross line here. No, no, no. Just carry on with your question. Yes. Yes. As some of these brokers, they get your information from third party and uh, uh, they get your business, but they don't make it clear uh, the dangers of investing in sh uh, stock and shares. Mm -hmm. For example, the ask you a question. The question is, mm -hmm. um, I have a situation where I told my broker to sell my shares before the stock market opened right. on a certain price. Yeah. And the price of my poor, uh, share went 50 pence over the limit I set right. and they still didn't sell it. Yeah. Have I, uh, have I uh, got any uh, right to ask for compensation, please? Uh, I personally, I've been through that situation myself, but I'm going to put the question forward to Mahesh. Maybe you can, what, what's the situation with selling? So you, you called your broker, let, let me understand this correctly, you called your broker before the market opened. That's right, I wanted to my, sell my shares for, for argument's sake, I said, well, the, the, the price reaches 450, sell it. 
So you put a, 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 uh, limit, order. a limit order. That's right. And asked him to sell it, and you placed that order over the phone. That's right. And the and price went about five pounds, oh. um, uh, and they still didn't sell it. Okay, so the the uh, so if they didn't sell it and you have a phone conversation, that should have been recorded because no brokerage firm is allowed to have uh, any communication with a client without a uh, backup recording. That's so you can call up and ask for the recording uh, and the transcript of the recording, and you can challenge that order. Thank you.